Welcome to my channel. In this episode, we will show you step-by-step step on how to make a resin background using polystyrene as a mold. John Radcliffe from the Tech Den in Caboolture, Queensland, has kindly donated his aquarium store for well-known Steve Baines, author and longtime member and president of many Queensland fish clubs, and has been involved with fish for around 50 years. He has designed and built many environmental displays for private government and educational centres. He has written two successful children's books about native fish with more to come. I hope you enjoy this in-depth video. We're going to make a background for that fish tank. Here's one I prepared earlier. So I've got an idea of what I want to do, how I want to make the rock. So I'll just start cutting. But if anyone's got any questions or wants to make any comments, I've got no problem with that at all. Join the um, polystyrene together, you use, um, I just thought I'd mention that while you're on the subject. Yep. Um, well, I only use um, silicon, okay. but you can use absolutely anything. So um, when you use that um, polyurethane glue, it actually expands into all the crevices? Oh, okay, yep, yep. See, I'm being very careful, did you notice? Hopefully, by the end of the evening, we'll have something that looks reasonable. This is probably, you know, normally you take a, a week or so to do this, but we're going to try and do it in a couple of hours. Okay. So when it comes to sizing for your background tank, yep. that um, John sent me the measurements for this fish tank and he measured it exactly, it's fantastic. Problem is, by the time you put resin on it, it's gonna grow. Um, the other thing is too, if it's too tight, when you're putting it in, you'll see soon when I use the resin, that it'll, um, I add sand to it, so if you don't make it nice and smooth, you're going to scratch the side of your fish tank. So don't make it too tight.
No, 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 it can be smooth. Um, but that's an interesting point because if you get resin on the glass, it won't stick to it, it'll peel off really easy. So, yes, it's got to have some sort of key. Um, so, yeah. This will become obvious in a minute when I um, heat it, what's going to happen. Sorry? Be great at your manager. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and 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 I have used a resin that is similar to araldite so the stuff I use is a two-part epoxy resin. The stuff I used for years and years and years was um, for used on marine uh, boat hulls. But unfortunately, I used to. I developed a real, real um, problem with it to the extent that four times I end up in hospital. Because once you have a, a reaction to it, it doesn't go away. It just gets worse and worse. So it took, you know, 30 years before it was really bad. Anyway, I thought, well, that's it. I can't make any more reptile enclosures. I can't make any more fish tanks. There's just no way I can do it. And the, hey? And the company I went to um, said to me, I know a chemist that I reckon could make you something. Anyway, I went to see this guy and he said, I promise you that this two-part epoxy resin, um, you'll have zero effects from it. You know, you'll have no reaction at all. And I thought, oh, that's a pretty big call. Um, sorry. Anyway, um, I've used it and I've been using it for, I guess, three years now and I can get it. The other stuff, if I got even just one drop on my skin, like within seconds, I had a huge welt. Um, like, the average person could probably use it, you know? And I did think if my kids were interested, I had seven, so I thought, you know, I could sort of... I get a lot of life out of it, but none of them are keen. So. And that's when you got it tonight. Sorry? And that's when you got it tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I promise you, I think it'll look all right when we're finished. I just don't want it too di just two dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm not used to having an audience, I'm used to doing it at home in my garage. No, I, I was just going to say, if anything, I reckon there's an issue if it's too thick. Because the problem is, anyone who's been on a surfboard or a boogie board, how hard is it to keep down? You know? When you're yeah, surfing, I mean, your full body's on it and it's still above the water surface. Um, so the thinner, the better. In the case of this, and we're not going to do it all tonight, and then eventually we're going to make it like that. So it's just all resin. It'll just slip in the back of this tank. So that if for any reason you think, no, I don't like this anymore, you know, it, you can remove it. The same here, the same principle. Um, if you wanted to, you could put pockets in here and put, you know, you know how hard it is to plant the plants. But if you had little pockets, you could put the pots in the pockets and just let them grow naturally um, without trying to use tweezers and putting each individual plant in. You've got to remember, like, some of you guys, piece of cake, you can do it easy, but the average person they would struggle so um and you can't you can't make a mistake with this stuff like I, I, I've got an idea of how I want it to look but if it doesn't turn out exactly right, doesn't matter. And like when you see it like this, you think, oh, it's pretty boring. The minute we put some resin on this and a bit of sand, it's amazing how quickly it actually looks quite realistic. Well, yeah. You, you want it to look as natural as possible. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm hoping this will turn out, and I'm, I'm confident it will. But, um, when you do the cracks on that in the rocks, yeah. Because I actually made a few mistakes when I first started. You try rounding things off and that, and you said, well, in nature, you don't actually see cracks end like that, you actually see them follow through. Yeah. So you actually got to try and, you've got to vision a, a rock wall and then follow it through. Now, in relation to what you're saying too, like I've dug into these, make your, your um, crevices in that real deep. Because the problem is, by the time I put resin and sand on these, those cracks are going to go in pretty far. Now, I will tell you one thing. The more detailed you make the background, the harder it is to paint it, you know? Because if you miss a spot, let me tell you, it's pretty obvious. Now, you can also get grey polystyrene. Oh, really? Yep. 
And when you heat it, I meant to bring a piece with me. When you heat grey polystyrene, it goes black. Obviously, Jack, you were saying about before about getting it thin, the more or the deeper you go, the more features you're going to have in it, you know. Um, so, like, there's nothing wrong with those backgrounds. They don't take a lot of space up out of your tank. Um, the beauty of this, when you take, when you take all the polystyrene away, and you're just left in resin because people say yeah but it takes a lot of room out of the tank it takes a lot of swimming room out of the tank but the purpose you have a fish tank generally is to look at the fish so by the time like I did one of these for a client of mine at Bribe Island and he had a six by two tank so in his office and this is like really beautiful home in, when you went into his office where he worked, there was this six foot tank on top of a cabinet with um, rams and tetras and gravel and really nice plants and a, a, look, a sandstone colored background. Looked awesome. When you went into his um, um, games room where the billiard table and everything, there was a six foot picture frame, um, stainless steel picture frame with a six foot tank, with a background and big discus. And it looked stunning. And the builder said, oh, I love your tanks. And he goes, tank. No, no, I love your two tanks. It's the same tank. So what I did, I got the drift, I got the background, carved it, made it like that. And of course it was two different backgrounds, painted them different colors, put different colored gravel different fish but fish that like the same water conditions and had a sump and so it was one tank but with this thin awesome looking background down the middle that only took out maybe two inches at the most and it looked awesome so you could do the same with this so what you see here once I heat all this around, away what we can do once I heat it up, I could paint the other side a different colour so when you put it in the tank, you can swap the background. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Um, and, if, if, and it's amazing, like we're seeing this side, but the reverse of this will be completely different. There's still quite a bit of bulk in this, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that because now you can finish it off. Now see, this is wet and dry sandpaper. So you're supposed to use it wet, but I don't bother. So all I'm doing is just knocking off rough bits that will probably fall off when I try to um, when I try to resin anyway is Mark is still with us are you
So we're all pretty happy with that. We don't want to go any further, do we? Look, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Realistically, look, I, I don't know, but but I would think maybe ten bucks, maybe. Even if it was twenty, it's Yeah. Can I ask why are you why are you um, rolling the bat and then roughing it up? Again? Sorry. Why are you making it rough again with the paper? No, well, it's not actually making it rough. Sandpaper is actually making it a bit smoother than what it is. So it's not real. All I'm doing is knocking off little tiny things. So when, because when you're painting, all those little tiny bits are going to fall off and they're going to be a pain in the bum because they're going to be on your paintbrush and you don't want them on your paintbrush. Then you give it a... We've got a two-part epoxy resin. Now, I get mine from AAA Composites, um, but this product is sold throughout the world. Okay, so, nothing but the best, high-quality brushes. What was that, about $9.95? And, see, high-quality. 399 because the problem is you use it once right yep you cannot reuse them you could I imagine you could put them in acetone because acetone removes resin but for 399 although if I was a better environmentalist which I sort of am I'd probably think yeah but that's another paintbrush you've you know ruined anyway all right so, now, the easiest way to measure out resin, because it's one to two. So, and I have to go and get some new ones, because... So that what I do, it's easy. One of them, two of that. And if you're not real clever, you can put A and B because you don't want to mix them. But let me tell you, um, B always goes milky, whereas A always stays cloudy, so it's easier. Now, if you're tight, like me, and you want to do little jobs, look at that. You'd all be familiar with them in an aquarium shop. So that's A and B. Let's get started. So as I said, with fiberglass resin, you can make a hot mix. With this resin, you cannot make a hot mix. You've got to stick to one to two. Okay? Man, they got really fancy because they didn't have any of this on it. Can't play with that either? No, no, that's not a tool either, a toy apparently. Um, uh, number one rule. Don't get it on yourself. No, no, it's, yeah, it's not a problem. Get well, not anymore. The number one rule: use gloves. And you always put the red in first. I don't know why, but the chemist said that's how you do it. So that's B, right? Yep. So one B, two A. That's correct. So, a, a kit is $135. Of the resin? Yep. So those three cups will do the whole thing? Oh, easy. Well... Two cups, one cup? Uh, one cup, well, I'm hoping. But there is a lot of um, indentation, so I don't know. How long do you have to work? Do you have to work with that? Okay, so you've got to mix it realistically for probably a minute and a half. Make sure it's really, really, really well mixed in. Working time, I'd reckon 15, 20 minutes. So, now this is important. When you're doing it, you always start with the lightest color because this is oxide. You know that they put in cement to, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's an oxide. It's a natural product. It's oxide. So it's a white powder, right? So I wouldn't put that amount of black oxide in there. Why? Why wouldn't I put that much black in there? Sorry? Well, the problem is, if I put that much black in there, what am I going to end up with? Black. Now, say you think, oh, I'd like to put some blonde highlights. You can't, it's black. Once it's black, it doesn't matter how much powder you put in there. So we'll put... Who's the same one? <laughs> Says something. <laughs> All right, so we've got a nice grey colour. All right. Mix it in, mix it in, mix it in. Then try to find somewhere that you can put it, but it's not going to drip everywhere. All right. Is there anything like a printer where you have three primary colours that you generally use? Oh look, there's, there's so many oxides, like I've got green oxide here. So if you want to do moss, there's green oxide. There's even a blue. Yeah, I've got a blue too, yep. Yeah, they're expensive. Yes. You can even mix in right. glitter if you want to do Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that anyone would want it. Well, I wouldn't want it. But hey, everyone to their own. Now what we'll do... We'll just Yeah, maybe it won't do it. I don't know. Oops. That's probably not a good idea. So what I'm gonna do You might say, oh yeah, I like that, but it's a bit of a boring colour. So, let's just splash a bit on. Yeah, maybe it will take more than this, because it's so, I've really um, made some serious indentations. Yes, yes, and and to get really, really good blending, I use, you know those sponges that are green on one side and yellow on the other? I just put water in them. So we're going to put some sandstone. I don't know what's going to happen. Various colour sands you're chucking in the resin at the moment? No, it's oxides. Yeah. Yeah, well, what I was going to say was originally we were going to make it black and white, but there'll be. Yeah, yeah, I look, and, sorry? Like how long you want to dedicate to the paint side of it? Yeah. But, but if you're going to do three or four coats, you would, um, you'd start maybe all black or all brown. Um, black's probably the best colour because then all of these little grooves, if you go all black on there, then you're going to be able to see that you've got, as Jason said before, you've got every little bit of, um, 
of colour. Oh yeah. They do a lot of painting. Yes. Yeah, well, and the next thing I'm going to say, and you're going to find this a bit interesting, um, you can actually be a graffiti artist and use spray cans, but, but, if you do it before you resin it, it will eat the pot. Coat it with resin. You could, you could coat it a couple of times, and funnily enough, you spray paint it while the second coat is drying, and the um, the paint goes into the resin, so it then doesn't become toxic. Moving bar. If you were to coat it and then paint it, you'd have to obviously wait for the first coat to dry. Yes, yep, yep, you're right. How long does it take the first coat to dry? About four hours. Four hours. So remember, I'm just showing this. So we're now going to use chestnut. Uh, yeah, we will. Although, I reckon that's not as good a... You pull that back a bit, Steve, with the door. Sorry? Back, back towards the tarp. No, no, the actual. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jase. Right. Um, now, to get into a lot of these, I should have done this before, makes it so much easier to get into, you know, places like that just use a little brush you know the big brush is just for anyway I'll just paint a bit of this on just to Right, now if we really want to make it pop, how much would each one of those bags stop? Uh, look, I, about, I think $16 or something. They're not, they're not dear. And they'll last you a long time. So it's something that would cost you a lot to do the first one, but then obviously... Yes. Set up, you know, the initial, initial buying... Yeah. Probably yeah. And remember, this is just the first coat. So, how many coats do you do to get them like that? That's all resin. Probably four. And that's when you can start melting the. the well, you can start melting it after the second coat. Um, but be careful because. Once you start to melt the polystyrene away, the resin will get quite soft. So you got to be careful. Oh. Why will it get soft? Um, because it gets hot. Oh, with the heating? Yeah. I should have got someone else to do all the painting.
it'll go pretty close to doing it all. <laughs> Sorry, Marcus. So you you're mixing these powders. What are they again? Oxides. Oxides. Yep. Once this sets, it's sealed. Or do you still have to seal it? No, wait and yeah, no, no. This no, it, it'll seal it. But there's something to go on. The important ingredients got to go on yet. Does anyone know what it is? <laughs> it's the most important part of the background. It's what makes... Real sand? Yeah. Yep. yep. Real sand. Real sand. So you don't want to mix real sand in the first well, you, you can, It depends what you're trying to make. If you were do, you know, like doing all resin, it's a great idea to mix sand in the resin. The only problem with that is that it's not as easy to paint. Um, so yeah. And see what you can do is get some of the darker areas and you want to blend it. <laughs> Is this in a fish tank? Yes. And keep it as a full styrofoam setting? Yes. You have to do the back as well? Uh, no, but this is where it's, it, and it's a good point Jack, if you just want to keep it as a full polystyrene background, you, um, you, you'd silicon it in, but the most important thing is to put a couple of glass cleats at the front so it doesn't come forward. Oh. Oops. In the past I've actually put uh, um, a couple of little glass squares on the back. Yeah. Do it as well? well you can. Um, if, you, if you put, the only problem with if you leave it all polystyrene, if you ever want to get it out, if the front glass cracks or or something or side or whatever it's a lot harder to get polystyrene out than if you've resined it and just basically sat it in there now I didn't intend to put all these different colors on but that's okay because well see yeah and if I want to make this if I want to make this all red rock or lava rock or warmer rock well even if it's all warmer rock or, or lava rock and it's natural it's not all one colour no no but I'm saying I could make this all one colour again with the second coat no, you normally would wait a couple of coats before you'd start to put this sort of detail into it. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a background. Well, we're only going to see one coat, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. White sand's the best, and I sieve it to a really fine aquarium net. And then, Hey. No, no, this is just sand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, non branded. Is there a reason for throwing it? Yep. Yep. There's a. 
it gets rid of my anger management. <laughs> now, reason being, because if you go, yeah, we're going to get a little bit on it. Yeah. And it's really funny watching people throw sand. Um, sorry, I don't mean to sell you. <laughs> it's just think of like being at the speedway, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. All right. So, <sighs> sorry, Bri. <laughs> yeah, did I? No, I'm, I'm sure I missed a, a few spots. So but the sand doesn't have to cover every single bit, does okay? it? No, well, it, I, ideally, if it does, is it that no, just to no. Why do you think I cover it all? Nope. Because resin, if you leave it thing, it'll go shiny. And it'll, it'll look shiny. And you don't want it shiny. Anyway. One background. A big thanks to everybody that was involved on the night. We all had a great time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as there will be more to come. Thanks for watching.